What's up guys? So I told everyone we were going to do a how to film a turkey hunt video and I said we were going to do it yesterday for Mondays with Mike. However, I forgot that Monday was mine and Kelsey's six year anniversary. So we had to postpone that. So it's Tuesday. So we're going to do a Tuesdays with Mike and uh, we're going to go out back in the woods behind the house and we're going to film a video on how to set up and film your turkey hunts. <laughs> Okay, so we're out in the woods, we're behind the house, and I've picked a setup here because of what's around us, but obviously you're gonna pick your setup based on your hunt. We are not discussing the hunt today, we're only discussing how to set up for a hunt and how to film a hunt. So, when setting up, one thing that you'll probably wanna do is have some sort of cover. So out here, we're gonna use a chair. Um, sometimes you might sit on the ground, use a pad. Today, it's wet, we're not hunting, it doesn't matter. We're just gonna use a chair. Kelsey's actually gonna use a bucket. But we are going to go ahead, we'll set this up. I'm gonna use this tree as kind of a backstop. Oh! The next thing that you can do is get some sort of cover. We do have a big cloth here that will drape over us and the camera when it comes time. But another thing that you might wanna do is use natural cover so if you can find a spot where you can have some trees in front of you that's great but it may not work out too well so one thing that we're gonna do is since we have these palmettos we will use palmettos typically so what you can do is come over here so get out pocket knife cut a few of these Golly, there's tough. There we go. So for this purpose's sake, we're not gonna get a ton of them because we don't need to kill all the vegetation. But um, these work especially well if you are sitting on the ground. Today we're gonna be in a chair, so they're not gonna be perfect. But you can just take these and drive them back down into the ground in front of you. And that becomes a little bit more natural cover. So when you're right here, you've got a little bit more in front of you. Theoretically, you'd be wearing full camouflage, ghillie suit, something like that. Then you got your camera covered up with this. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna build this setup, put it all together, and I'll show you what it is. Having a lens hood when you are filming turkey hunts is good because this helps keep the cover that you're gonna be using off of the lens so it's not hanging down in front of it as much. Um, so we'll get this camera set up here. Got a tripod set. And so this gives us a little cover here. We could put more right in front of us here. The next thing we'll do is the big black object being the camera and the tripod is going to be the one thing that you're really not going to have covered. So that's going to be your most important thing. So there's already a little hole here. So we'll cover all this up like so. Wrap the camera and the tripod up and you can get tape or something and tape this down as well. Did somebody just call for me? Hey Zena, we have some bogeys in the woods back here. We're not sure who they are. They got another dog. So we're distracting our little turkey at the moment. We will be back to filming the YouTube video in a moment. Okay, so you've got your camera set up. Obviously we don't have full cover like we normally would, but in the case of turkey hunting, turkeys are very vigilant and they see everything. So you wanna be fully covered. I like to have my face covered, wear a full ghillie suit. I'm trying to get tight and low and cover everything up so everything looks natural. You wanna use as much natural cover as you can. So if you can find a bush or a tree, that is ideal. So we're set up, 
we got the camera set up. Now, I will say when filming turkey hunts, filming any hunts, you want to try to be as close to your hunter and have the same point of view as your hunter because you don't want the hunter to be looking right out here into this clearing, but you're set up over here because then as they see the animal come in, you may not have the same view as them. They're gonna wanna shoot, but you don't want them to shoot because you can't get the shot. So ideally you wanna be somewhere where you and your hunter are both kind of up against the same tree, the same group of trees, so that way your backs are covered. You can lean back, you can be comfortable. And then also, if my hunter is right here, I have him looking the same path that I am. So then I know that when he sees the bird or the deer or whatever it may be, in this case a turkey, I'm gonna see it as well. And we can also communicate by using soft voices and not having to shout at each other or make weird hand signals. So there's no movement, no loud noises, and we can get everything done very quick and easily. So normally I like to have the camera over the hunter's shooting arm. So if he's right-handed, I will be on his right side. So when he comes up to shoot, I have the same angle of view that he does when it comes time to pull the trigger and take the animal. Okay, so you're over the hunter's shoulder. You've got your field of view match with him. Now you can communicate with them, but also at this point where you're closer to the hunter, you have the ability to use your second camera, which currently Kelsey is using to film me, to film stuff like the calling. So they'll be sitting there calling. They might be looking at a map on their phone. Whatever it is they're doing, other aspects of the hunt, loading the gun, all those things, you can use your second camera from right here to get all those B-roll shots that you would need and want. That allows you to keep this camera locked and loaded and ready for all animal footage so it never comes off of that area where you anticipate the animal to come in. So you kind of have the setup down. You know, if you're a turkey hunter, you understand, you know, be quiet, stay low, don't move around a lot, and more than likely you're gonna have a successful hunt. You just gotta put the camera in the right spot, be able to communicate well with the hunter, and everything should go as planned. So getting a little bit into the technical side of things, what you wanna do with your cameras, how you wanna set everything up with the cameras, will go on into that. Depending on what camera system you're using, I like to have a receiver on each camera. So I'll have a receiver on my A camera or my animal camera, and I'll have a receiver on my B camera, which is shooting all the B-roll footage of the hunter. The reason I like to have the audio all synced up, running to both cameras, all transmitting from one transmitter, is because the hunter is gonna be doing different things and you're gonna be filming different things. You're gonna want the audio of him calling, which is gonna be on your B cam. You're gonna want the audio of everything happening out there, the gunshot, all that, which is gonna be on your A cam. Because unless you have two people filming, you're not going to be running your B cam when you are filming with this. You know, when, you're, when this is in your hands, this camera, your B camera is gonna be on the ground sitting next to you, and you don't wanna just leave that running all day long, because then you have a bunch of useless video footage, and you gotta scrub through it and find the right audio. I've had people do this to me in edits before, and it is not fun. So just get a mic system with two receivers, one transmitter, and hook them up. If you don't, if you're using something like the Rode mics, just double mic your subject, and your hunter can wear two mics. It's not gonna kill them, and you can have audio going to both cameras still. So a good example of what you might miss if you're not running audio on this camera and you're only running it on your B camera is the reaction. You may not get the hunter's facial reaction, but you're going to get their reaction on the kill shot. They're gonna shoot that bird. They're gonna be super excited. They're gonna jump up, they're gonna be happy. And you're not gonna have time to capture that reaction because you're focused on that bird. So you'll at least have the audio to play behind this video. And then once this is going and good, you can quickly pick up your B camera and get it on the person and then pick up from there. If you wanna go a step further, you could even have a GoPro on them that's running all day long, and then you can sync all that up and post. So that pretty much covers everything that I can think of right now for filming a turkey hunt. It's really not that difficult. The biggest situation is just the setup, staying hidden and making sure you are in the right spot to get the shot. Because in the end, this is not like anything else. If you don't get the shot, you've missed it. There's no going back, there's no starting over. If they killed the bird, if they killed the deer, whatever it is, you've missed it. It's over, you're fired, you didn't get the shot, the episode's ruined, the hunt video is ruined, and that's all it is. That may sound a little bit mean, but it's the truth. If I were to give one of the harshest realities of filming something like an outdoor TV show, which is probably what you're doing if you're filming a hunt, the only thing in that show that is 100% real is the kill shot. 
and that is the shot that you're getting with this camera. It is the most important thing. So don't be distracted by anything else. Don't be trying to get the shots of him calling. Don't be trying to get the shots of him loading the gun. That can all be done later. Focus on the bird. Focus on the animal that you were targeting. Because if you miss that shot, again, it's over, you're done and you may not see any more hunts with that TV show anymore after that. So again, the most important thing is getting the kill shot. Focus on your B camera when you have time to focus on the B camera. But if there's animals out there, put that thing down. Don't worry about it. You can film all that stuff later. Xena has found a ball that she brought out into the woods, I guess. She found it in the woods, brought it back out into the woods, and then just refound it in the woods. So she's been a little distracting. <sighs> Get out of here. God, it bounced right back. <laughs> um, what am I saying? So that's pretty much all we've got for today. We've shown you how to set up your camera. You know what to do with it. You know how to set up the audio. You know, build it out, get it how you want it. Don't make it too big. You don't need to take up too much space and have more stuff to cover. Get it to the right size. You want to be very minimal in the field. You don't want to be carrying around a heavy camera. And again, don't miss the kill shot. That's the only thing that is 100% truly real. You can get everything else later. So focus on the hunt, get the hunt filmed, and then you can do all the walking in and out, filming the calling, loading the gun, all those things. But guys, I think that's all we've got for today. I hope you get out this year, try to film a turkey hunt. If you do, please send it to me, share it with me. I would love to see it. I'd be happy to help you. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out and ask me. If you guys like this video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and guys, we will see you in the next one.